Now that we have Server to Go installed, we're going to be looking at how to install Website Baker. This happens to be one of my favorite content management systems because it is free, easy, and pretty flexible. And so we're going to take a look at how to create some things in this. But before I go too far, I just want to point out that I'm now in Chrome. And in order to access the local host, you can type in the HTTP colon slash slash localhost or you can use the 127.0.0.1 but just notice that it in Chrome it actually takes off that part you'll notice that it just doesn't appear and that's just something that Chrome does um, just don't be alarmed if you see that um, in the in the tutorials here but I tend to like Chrome a lot anyway the very first thing that we have to do is download website Baker so we come to the website we go to download and we're gonna be downloading this stable version sometimes fun to play with other versions but we'll download the stable version and this is going to be downloaded right here into a zip folder. now in order to access the files we have to unzip them so I'm gonna go ahead and unzip them here I can extract them into a folder and if I take a look inside that folder you'll see there's a folder called WB this has all the files that this content management system uses so we need to make sure that we move over this folder called WB and if you want to you can rename it if you like so that it's a little bit more exact so it's called website baker and I'm gonna put this into the htdocs folder of my server to go and it just so happens I can see it right there so I'm gonna just drag that down to the htdocs folder. Now some of these other files that you see here are actually readme files. So if you open them with a the text editor, you'll be able to see um, some more information about installing Website Baker. But we're about to go through that. So I'm going to come back to um, my index, and this is on the with the server running, and I'm going to click on that server to go and PHP my admin. Then we have to put in that same same thing root and we're going to create a new database password uh, or sorry create a new database so this is going to be WB for website Baker is the database that we're going to create and we click on create now we should see WB on the left and if we go back to home we should indeed see WB as one of the um, databases there now what we can do is I'm going to go into this other tab and the only reason why is because I don't want to have to um, go through the whole process of going back into PHP my admin to see what happens after I've installed this. So right now um, it's not seeing that folder so I'm just going to reload this page and you'll see that website Baker appears. Now I can click on it and it automatically takes me into the installation wizard. So pretty much all the stuff at the top we're not going to worry about. It should auto detect whatever um, server this is on. We are going to be using, um, well, Linux-based works fine for me. If we want to do Windows, it doesn't really matter. I guess we can do that when we're doing it on a local server like this. Our local host uh, will be the host name. Our username is root with no password. That's the typical thing. And we did create a database called WB. Now, if you want to um, be more secure, you can, of course, do something other we're not going to worry about that. So we are going to give the website a, um, a title. This is the test website. And for the username and password, it is a good idea for you to do something more um, secure than what I'm going to do right now. Typically, when you install a database like this, don't use admin as the username. And the reason why is because if somebody was trying to hack it, if you give them at least half of it, and they know what the username is to start off with, then they don't have to work as hard to figure out the rest of it. Um, so typically you want to change that. But since this is a local host, I'm going to go ahead and just give it a very simple password of uh, PASS, P-A-S-S. Now the email doesn't really matter what we have right now, but I'm going to have this at notset.com. So admin at notset.com, and I just hit enter without even thinking about it because I'm so used to it. But you would then hit enter, and it will take you into the back end. So now you'll notice that it comes up with a big red warning that says the installation directory still exists. 
So we want to go back to the htdocs folder, find that website baker folder, and here's the install directory. Now you have two choices. You can disable it just by putting anything other than its typical name, or you can remove it altogether. Either way, when you come back and refresh, oops, sorry, I need to be in the right thing. When you refresh, you'll notice that it says everything is okay because we don't get that red warning. So that's good. We've just installed this correctly and you'll see what we've also changed is this config file. So this config file has now been updated with the information about our server and where it's located. Um, before we ran that installation, um, you'll see that if you were to go back to it, it the file would actually look like that. So what that installation did was um, update this file for us and get the database installed. So if I look back at the database here, um, here's the local host. Let me refresh and you'll see it now shows that the WB um, database includes 22 um, different tables. So that's what happened when we installed this. And uh, so go ahead and install Website Baker and then go on to the next tutorial.